Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to set up customer specific product pricing for your Microsoft Access order entry invoicing system. I'm going to show you how to set up product pricing that can be unique for each customer. So if you've got a specific customer who gets a special price on a product or two, instead of a blanket discount, for example, you can set that up. And I'm going to show you how in just a minute. Today's question comes from Gianna from Montreal, Quebec, one of my Platinum members. Gianna asks, I'm using your invoicing template, which is very helpful. Thank you. You're welcome. Is there any way to set up pricing that is specific to each customer? I have certain customers that get special discounts due to the overall volume they purchase. It's not a blanket discount. I'd like to modify the prices of certain products just for them. Well, yes, of course, Gianna. There's a way to do pretty much everything in Microsoft Access. You just got to know how. With this specific example, since it's not a blanket discount like 5% off of everything or 10% off of everything, what I would say we should do is set up a second table that has a list of the products and the customers and their special price. So we'll use a new table for this. So let's see how this would work. Now, before we get started, there are some prerequisites. There are some things you have to know before you finish watching this video. If you're not familiar with query criteria, the if function, the immediate if function, or the DLOOKUP function, then go watch these videos first. You need to understand how these work before continuing. So pause right now if you don't know what this stuff is. I'll put links down below in the links section. You can click on those or go to those pages, whichever you prefer. Everybody watch that stuff? You good? You good? Okay, here we go. Now Gianna is one of my Platinum members. So she has access to the members only invoicing system, which allows her to pick a product from a list and then hit the add button and it adds it up here into the invoicing automatically and her pricing is stored in a product table. Gianna, I will address how to handle this specifically in the extended cut for members. For everybody else, the non-members, I'm still going to show you how to do this. You just won't be able to pick a product and add it automatically to the invoicing form. That involves a bit of coding, some VBA, which is why it's for the extended cut. You guys still have an invoicing form in here. There's just no way to pick a product. You have to type it in. But that's okay. We could still make a product list with customer-specific pricing. Which, by the way, that's one more video you should go watch. If you haven't watched it already, my invoicing video, it's free. It's on my website, on YouTube. It's how we built this entire template, okay? So go watch that if you haven't yet. Okay, so now we're back here in my Tech Help free template with the invoicing. Let's set up a product list. So we'll set up a product table. All right, so create, table design, a product ID. That'll be my auto number. A product name, short text, and a price. That'll be currency. Save this as my product team, my product table. All right, no primary key, say yes. And then we can put some data in here. Let's say we've got a phaser. That's $100. We've got some triple food. That's $35. And we've got a 3D chess board. And that's $75. Okay, just three products. That's fine for now. Now we have to set up a cross-reference table between the customers and the products. So I'm going to take this product table and slide it over here just so we can keep an eye on it. All right, here's the customer table. There's our customers. Let me just slide this over next to it over here. Okay, we're going to make another table now that brings those two things together. This will be my customer pricing table. So this table gets its own ID, customer pricing ID, that's the auto number. We'll need a customer ID. Now that's a number of type long integer. That's a foreign key. If you haven't taken my relationships video, go watch that too. I'll put a link down below. You should know relationships before doing this stuff. Guess I should have made that prerequisite screen a little bit bigger, huh? <laughs> so we know the customer. Now we also need to know the product, right? Product ID. That's a number of type long integer that's going to point to the product table. And now, what's the custom price? So price. That'll be a currency. All right, let's save this. Customer 
pricing T. All right, primary key is this guy right here. Okay, save it. Let's go into data sheet view and let's add some data. All right, so customer ID, let's say customer one, that's me. Product, the phaser, product one. All right, now normally people pay $100. Let's say I get it for 95. Okay, all right, same customer. Let's say the 3D chessboard. Let's say I get it for 60 bucks. Okay, triple food, it's a commodity. No one gets a discount on that. So no one gets special price on triple food. Okay, let's go down to Jim Kirk, customer two. He gets phasers for 65 because he buys a lot of them, right? And let's say the 3D chessboard. Um, let's see, that's product three. So he gets it for $45. Okay, see how this works? You set your customers here, you set your products here, and there's the price. So now all we have to do is set up a query where we list all the products, and then we say, hey, is this product in the table for the customer that we're currently making an order for? All right, here's how we do that. So I'm gonna just take this and close that, close that, close that, save changes, sure. Now, how do we know which customer we're dealing with? Well, let's make sure that the customer form is open, okay, for us to get the customer specific pricing. Or we could base it on the order form, whichever one you want. I'm going to base it on the customer form because usually if the order form is open, the customer form is open as well. In fact, with this database, the way we have it organized, you can't get to the order form without going through the customer form first. So that's okay. So unless someone comes in here and manually closes the customer form, this should work just fine. All right. So from the customer form, we're going to use the customer ID off the customer form in a query. Okay, here's how we're going to do it. Ready? Create, query design. We're going to bring in the product table. Okay, close down the all tables. We're not joining it to anything. Just bring in the product table. So bring down all the fields if you want to. And now we're going to create a custom field right here. I'll use the zoom key, shift F2 to zoom in so the text is a little bit bigger. Okay, we're going to call this one custom price. And I just typed in customer and hit backspace. I'm, my fingers are just so used to typing in the word customer because I do it all the time for classes. Custom price. We're going to use the DLOOKUP function. So it's DLOOKUP. What am I looking up? The price field from customer pricing T. That's the table. What's the criteria? Customer ID equals, close your quotes, and then we're going to concatenate forms, customer F, customer ID, but we're not done yet, and the product ID equals whatever the product ID is in the current record. See that? Right? Look up the price from the customer pricing table where the customer ID equals six or whatever customer happens to be open on the form. And the product ID equals whatever this product ID is over here for this record. Hit OK. Let's make sure this works first. I'm going to save this as my customer pricing queue. All right, let's run it and see what we got. OK, look at that. Now, the customer that's open is one. OK, so look at this. There's my custom pricing, see? 95 for the phaser, 60 for the 3D chessboard, nothing for the triple food, so that's null. We'll deal with that in just a minute. That's where the if function's coming in, all right? Let's change this. Let me close this. Let's change to Jim Kirk. Now let's run that query. Look at that. There's Jim Kirk's pricing, 65 and 45. All right, let's go to somebody else who doesn't have custom pricing, and they're all null. Okay, looking good so far. All right, let's go back to me. Design view. Now we have to deal with that null value. So this field here is where we'll say, if that price is null, use the default price. Otherwise, use the custom price. And I'll zoom in for you so you can see it better. All right, here we go. My price, colon, if, IIF, is null, Custom price, comma, price, comma, custom price. All right. Hit OK. What does that do? Well, it says if custom price is null, this guy here, 
then use the default price over here from the product T. Otherwise, use that custom price value. Save it. And now let's take a peek. And there we go. See, 95 because it's got a value. That one's null, so it uses the 35. Okay, 75. All right. But I've got 60. Now, you can format this as currency, but sometimes with these calculated fields, the format doesn't stick. If you right click, go to properties, format, currency. All right, save it, close it, close it, and then run it again. See, it doesn't always stick with a calculated value, but you can force it with the, um, with the format function. So I can come over here and say, um, final price, let's call it, is format my price, comma, currency. Just like that. And yes, I've got lessons on format properties too. <laughs> now run it, and now you can see it's formatted as a currency value. Now what I would do is make another query, because you have to display all of this stuff for this to work. If you hide the price, for example, then the calculations won't work. But you can make a second query and then pop that up for your price list. So close this one. Save changes, yes. Create. Query design. Bring in customer pricing. And what do you want to see for each customer? The product name and the final price. Maybe sort it by product name. Okay, save this as customer pricing 2Q, perhaps. It's based on the first one, though. All right, so now you just run that, and there's this customer's specific pricing. So now to see a list of this customer's pricing when you're making an order for them, you can either put it on the order form or on the customer form. Either way, come over here, design view, right? Make a button down here. Button, drop it, right? Miscellaneous, run query, customer pricing two. Right, specific pricing. Next, give it a name if you want to, pricing button, and then finish. Here's your specific pricing button for this customer. Save that, and now you can open it up that easily. See? And if you want to add any more specific pricing for this customer, just open up the customer pricing table and add it in here. And yes, in my full classes, I show a lot more. You can create a little subform down here where you can pick the product from a list and give them specific pricing that way. There's all kinds of stuff you can do. I only have time for a brief introduction to it here. But I show a lot more in the extended cut and in my Access Developer 28 class where I cover more specific pricing. For example, if you're putting in an order for a customer and you change the price here, it'll ask you if you want to change it in the table. So that's all covered in Developer 28. Okay, want to learn more? In the extended cut, we update the members database where we have custom pricing showing in the combo box when you go to add an order. You can see here, Richard Ross, that's me. I pay $3,000 for a photon torpedo, but Will Riker over here only pays $1,701. Then you can click on the add button and it goes right up here. That's in the extended cut for members, silver members and up. Get access to all of the Extended Cut videos. Gold members and up can download all of my templates from the Tech Help videos. And if you want to keep learning even more than that, Microsoft Access Developer 28. If you change the price on the order, it'll say, do you want to make custom pricing for this customer? Then it will take that price and add it to the custom pricing table. Plus, I'll show you how to make a subform on your customer form where you can see all of their custom pricing. That's an Access Developer 28. I'll put links to all this stuff down below in the links section. How do you become a member? Click the Join button below the video. After you click the Join button, you'll see a list of all the different types of membership levels that are available. Silver members and up will get access to all of the extended cut tech help videos, live video and chat sessions, and more. Gold members get access to a download folder containing all the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus access to my full beginner courses and some of my expert courses. These are the full length courses found on my website and not just for access. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, ASP, and lots more. 
But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and feel free to post any comments that you have. I do read them all. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Click on the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of building databases with Access. It's over three hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. And if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. And it's also free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my Tech Help page and you can send me your question there. Click here to watch my free Access Beginner Level 1 course, more of my Tech Help videos, or to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching this video from AccessLearningZone.com.